Hey everyone, let's get this DS Lite fixed up, shall we? I'm gonna need a few tools in order to fix this. So the basic tools that I'm going to need are a little tri-wing screwdriver. This particular one came off of eBay. I got two of them for $3.50 shipped. A little Phillips head screwdriver. This one happens to be a tiny little Craftsman. This is a double zero Phillips head screwdriver. The other thing that I'm going to need is a multimeter. I have the meter off to the side here, but these are the probes for it. For today's work, all I really need to do is check continuity. And when you're checking continuity, you can do it one of two ways. You can either set the thing for ohms and watch the display, or what can be a lot easier as you're probing around inside these tiny little devices is to set it for an audible continuity mode, in which case it beeps when it detects continuity like this. Convenient, isn't that? Yes. Now, since I'm pretty sure I know what's going on, I'm also gonna get a few other tools. The first thing I'm going to get out is my soldering iron. This happens to be a cordless soldering iron. It runs on AA batteries. I like this soldering iron for doing very fine, tiny work because it's got such a short tip with a very sharp point on it. I can get right up close to the actual work, which gives me much better precision. The other thing that we're going to need is some solder in case the solder pads happen to get run dry during the process of removing components, which we will be using some of this stuff to do. This is some very, very tiny little solder braid. It's rosin impregnated, so that lets it suck the solder up into this braid. And when you get some solder saturated in here, you simply pull out a little bit more, cut off the dead piece, throw it out, and keep going. The last and final thing that I'm going to find very useful for my work today is a pair of very fine tweezers because I need to hold both the old fuse and the new one when I'm going about replacing it. So let's take a look at what we're actually working on. Here's the unit. I've already pulled the battery and battery cover off just to make life a little bit easier. There's a few different types of screws around the outside that we need to remove in order to get the bottom cover off. Once you get the battery cover and battery out, you'll notice that there's a Phillips head screw over here and then down in this well, there's a tri-wing screw. Over here we have another tri-wing along with this one, and then there's a couple of screws underneath these rubber bumper covers. Let's go ahead and get those rubber bumper covers removed now. I'm just using the pointy end of a plastic spudger. These can also be had off of DigiKey for just a couple of bucks. So let's get that Phillips head screw taken out here first. Magnetized screwdriver comes in very handy for something like this. Now the other two screws underneath those covers that we pulled out are also Phillips head. Let's break out our tri-wing and remove the three remaining tri-ring screws. Now we've got nothing holding this bottom case on, except a couple of snaps, and this is where the spudger comes in handy again. Simply open up the DS Lite, and you'll notice that the casing is starting to come apart. If you start to pry up the back, you'll make a little gap. Stick the flat end of your spudger in here and just kind of gently run it along. You'll eventually hear some cracking and snapping like that. Those are the internal snaps releasing. Once you get about three quarters of the way across, the thing will start to come apart on its own. You won't need the spudger anymore. Now I totally forgot a screw, and this is a lesson learned for both of us. It's a good thing I stopped when I did. If you ever start feeling tension when you're removing a part, don't keep going at it. There's probably something holding it there. I totally forgot that there's a tri-wing screw hiding underneath this spot. There's the inside of the back shell. Just a note, if the shoulder buttons pop out, they're simply stuck there on kind of a pin as a hinge and then they've got a metal spring that they use for leverage and that just rests up against that post where the screw goes through to hold the back casing on. Now everything that we're going to be working on is actually going to be on this right side of the board. So I'm going to reorient this way and let's get a little closer in. Based on some research, chances are I've got a blown fuse which is why I went and bought some replacement fuse parts. There are two fuses inside a DS light. There's this one and then there's this one. You can see they both kind of have that green top on them. 
The specific problem that I'm having, if you remember from last time, is that the unit doesn't get any power at all, except the power light on the front will illuminate for about a second when you plug in the AC adapter. Based on everything that I've read, that indicates that this fuse is the one that's shot. I'm going to test out both of these, and the easiest way to do that is with the multimeter. When they're bad, they fail closed, meaning no current can get through them at all. So a simple continuity test is really all we need to determine whether a fuse is good or not. Let's check out this fuse first. There we go. So that fuse is good. Let's check this fuse out over here. No beeping. Yeah, so I'm not getting any continuity through, which suggests that this fuse is the culprit. So let's go ahead and replace it. Okay, it looks like this is about the tightest I'm gonna be able to get you in here with me. This is the smallest solder braid that you can get from DigiKey. So let's see what we can make happen here. See how I got that one side pulled out? There we go. All right, that fuse is out. That's it. That's the old dead fuse. There it is in relation to my fingertip. Now what's nice is it doesn't look like I damaged the board. A couple of little, little marks there from the flux, but I didn't lift any traces, I didn't lift any solder on any other components nearby. That's what I always worry about. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put a little bit more solder back on those pads. Look like they have a decent amount, but I can't say for sure. So here's our baggie of teeny tiny replacement fuses. If you're going to go out and buy fuses, what you need are these guys. These are 500 milliamp, 32 volt, fast blow, 0603 package. These are very, very tiny. This is our brand new replacement fuse. Let's at least get it placed in there. There. Now all we got to do is tack it down. In this case, I may actually just use the flat edge of my spudger to hold it down. I'm not sure if you can see this part. I don't know if you saw that or not, but I tacked that side down. Actually, I got to go at kind of an angle like this. Sorry, right, guys. Okay, I think it's in. How's that look? A little crooked. The real question is, are my solder connections good? The only way to find that out is to plug the unit in and power it up. Okay, so for the purpose of the testing, I don't know if this battery has any juice in it. I'm not going to count on it to, but we can just try by sending it in against those contacts, holding it there, and flipping the unit over, and then manually flicking the switch on the side here. Oh, look at that! Ha ha! Success! That's freaking fantastic. Let's button this guy up real quick. I've got this volume slider all the way to the right on this case, so I'm going to take this volume slider and move it all the way to the right. The power slider is where it should be, and I've got my shoulder buttons sitting in here. So let's go ahead and try and snap this back together. of truth. Here we go. So of course the last test we need to do is to just make sure that it charges. 
and it does. But anyway, I'm gonna call this one wrapped up. It works, it plays, it charges, both slots work, all the buttons work. Thanks for watching, guys. I'll talk to you next time.